Uh, while you're uh, while you're watching this, I wanted you to make a note of a couple of things. Something called an eddy. An eddy is the swirling mass of the turbulent fluid. That's kind of an interesting uh, thing to keep a note of. So that's that swirling mass that you saw in the video clip. All right. And then the last thing there that we want to talk about in terms of this context is the bed load. Now, the bed load is the sediment particles that travel along the stream bed by sliding, rolling, and bouncing. So they, they, they do that bed load thing. I think I've got the picture here, right? That's the stuff on the bottom, and they just kind of get transported. Those are called the bed load, right? All right. That leads us to an interesting concept, and that is called the threshold velocity. The threshold velocity is the velocity of flow that is needed to move certain particles along the bed of a stream. And as you can kind of see, the, uh, the higher the stream velocity, so this would be fast right here, very fast-moving stream. And down here, you would have a slow-moving stream. And then we can have different sized particles. So mud, if it's going really slow, can be transported. Okay, Silt can be transported if it's going this speed. If it's going, they don't have numbers here. And then cobbles need a very, very fast stream to be transported down. So it depends on how fast your speed is. That's the threshold velocity. So to illustrate this, I found some amazing uh, video clips. And I'm going to kind of talk over them. They're quiet. And uh, that explain or show you how, how, how sediment is transported. Um, um, a professor at a university um, uh, did this for us. So let's uh, uh, do that. So as you watch this um, stream sediment, notice that there's lots of stuff here. The sediment load is kind of the sandy, cloudy part that we're seeing here. And then you can see the bed load. Notice the little rocks as they travel along. And that helps us to understand how um, this is working. Lots of uh, stream and bed flow. Uh, it's all, uh, you, can see, you can see how the sediments gets transported downstream. This is just a tank and they've got a, kind of a, a stream that's been produced uh, artificially, but we can still understand the same concept as we look at this compared to what we've seen before. In this next experiment, experiment, there's two different sized pebbles. We've got the 2.5 and the 7.0 uh, millimeter sized particles. And if you look carefully, I wish it was a little slower, we're keeping the same speed up, that the smaller ones are moving more than the bigger ones. And that makes sense because the smaller ones are more easily transported as we um, look at this stream table experiment. In this last experiment that we're going to look at, we can still see the stream flow kind of above on the top. But this is called the sand infiltration one. What we've basically got is there's also sand particles. And if you watch carefully and look down below, you can start seeing the sand fall down into uh, the sediment bed because of it's infiltrating the gravel. So we've got gravel of a certain size, and we've got sand of a very small size. So the sand gets moved along you know, in suspension, but some of it will settle to the bottom and kind of create a sandy bottom to um, the river. Those are pretty cool. All right, nice. All right, let's uh, move on to something. Now we're to get mathematical. All right, I want to talk about something called stream power. So this whole concept of stream science, of course, it all involves math because, you know, science and math, they go together. You Really? Yeah, that's right. Chelsea, do you know that it really goes together? I bet you did. Okay. <laughs> Chelsea, we were having a conversation yesterday about math and science. All right, a stream of power is the rate of energy dissipation against the bed and banks of a river or stream. It is given by the equation. You mean there's math with rivers? Oh, you bet. And now we got a funny looking equation with funny looking symbols. You know, scientists, they run out of letters. When they run out of letters like A, B, C, D, they started using like Greek symbols. Uh, and so that's what they did. So, all right, where this is the stream power. Okay, we power, okay. Uh, this funny looking P is the density of the water. 
we'll assume that this is the density of water, that if it's, it can be a little bit more, but usually isn't. G is the acceleration due to gravity, because of course a stream um, is going uh, downhill and it's on the Earth. I mean, if you had a stream on Mars, it would be a different number, but, but we're not on Mars. All right, Q is the hydraulic discharge. Okay, this means how fast the river is traveling. This is the volume per second, meters cubed per second, and S is the channel slope. So why don't we do a sample problem like this? I'm going to guarantee I'll see one of these on the test. That's right, you'll see it on the test. Uh, well, my voice is changing. Hello. All right, <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's get our calculators out and do a sample problem. All right, so here's my example here. What is the stream power of a stream um, with a 20 degree slope and a discharge of 32 cubic meters per second? So here's our equation. This is the stream power. That's actually the Greek letter chi. Uh, P is the density. All right, so we're going to say, so that's going to equal to uh, P. P is going to be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. By the way, that's the density of water in kilogram meters per meters cubed. You might remember that the density of water is 1 gram per 1 milliliter. But of course, if we've got a larger volume, a cubic meter, which is a meter stick, and a meter stick's three, like th a little over three feet by three feet by three feet, it's a much bigger number. Times now a G, now that G, we've seen that, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the Q. Now Q is the hydraulic discharge. Now what number is that up here? Mm, it's either the 20 or the 32. Think, think, that's right, it's the 32. 32 cubic meters per second. And then lastly, we have the channel slope, and this is just 20 degrees. So now we're just going to type that into my calculator. Let me get the calculator a little closer. 1,000 times 9.8 times 32 times 20 degrees. And I get, wow, 6272000. And the interesting thing about that is that is going to be uh, in units of watts. Now you might have heard of watts before, like uh, you've got so many watts uh, in your microwave oven or watts on a light bulb, and this is a huge number. What is that? Like six million watts. There's a lot of energy. See, why, did, why would a scientist care about the stream power? Well, can you convert these watts and then maybe turn it into electricity using a hydrologic dam? Of course you could. And I've picked one, 32 meters. Uh, this is a very, very fast stream, a very, very high volume stream, and it's at a very high slope. They oftentimes these numbers are much smaller, which would make your watts uh, smaller. These numbers stay the same, of course. So it's amazing how much energy can be found in a stream. And if you have that energy, of course, you can use that and convert it into, say, electricity. You can uh, you know charge your iPod with it or something like that, right? All right, let's put the calculator away.